All right, so how is mobile helping the shopping experience these days? Jim Crawford's going to show us. Jim, we're consumers. We just got a text message that we opted in to receive from a supermarket that said, hey, come get your discount coupon, and we're about to go through the scanning process. Yeah, what we've, what we've got here is uh, a simulation of all the ways in which the technologies come together for the shopper. So the first one is when you walk into a store, there needs to be a very quick and easy touch point to take what's on your phone and turn it into something that can be used in the store. The integration's a nightmare on the back. This is a very simple way to do it. You've got a text message, you put it up here against the, the scanner, and it'll read this off of, I think it's about 99.7% of the four billion handsets in the world. So it's very simple. This, for the booth, obviously, we're asking for some information, but the customer would simply get uh, an, an experience out of this that would tell us, at the end, print out their offers. So here's a coupon. We didn't win. <laughs> but we still, we're going to win. We're going to win. We're going to get a coupon. And what, what, this, what this is doing is taking the experience on the phone and bringing it into the store. We now have something that, it could be a shopping list, it could be product information, but most importantly, it can be something that can be read at the cash register. Laser scanners can't read things off of these, and so there has to be some integration point. This is one very simple way to do it. All right, let's move on to our shopping. Of course, these days, Jim, stores have virtually everything, it seems like, a lot of products, not just supermarket goods, but hard goods as well. Help me buy some shoes here. Well, if you, I'm sure it's happened to all of us. You, find, you see a pair of shoes that you like, and the process today is you have to wait for a store clerk, and then ask them if they have it in your size, and then he disappears into the back for about five minutes and comes back and says, no, we don't, right. pick another shoe. What we're trying to do here is show how all that is is looking at a database. And so if you give the consumer an easy interface, like their own cell phone, you can take the clerk out of it entirely until you're ready to buy the shoes. So right. here, when you point the camera at the shoe, you'll see it picks it up and says it heals. It asks you, do you want to select your size? Or since people like to share uh, fashion shopping with their friends, you can take a picture of this and send it off to somebody and say, hey, what do you think about this? Would this look good on me? But here, uh, I don't. I really don't think it's your style, by the way. I prefer a little bit lower heel, a personally. Flat, yeah. Yes. So. What we're, what we're showing here is that you can quickly select your size and then it'll query a database and tell you right there without a clerk having to do anything or the shopper having to wait whether or not that's the right shoe for you. Excellent. Now on the grocery shopping and Jim, we have uh, some short code opportunities here. Yeah, one of the really important things in retail is that not everybody has the latest and greatest camera phone. I mean, we're at, we're at a show where a lot of people do, but when you're dealing with shoppers, you've got to deal not just with me, who carries a fancy phone, but my mom, who carries a very, very simple one. So what we have here is a short code that allows the simplest interface of all to allow the customer to get information uh, right there in the store. So if somebody dials, you know, hash meals, they'll get actually recipes delivered down. And so the retailer can have all these technologies working together, whether it's something simple like a short code, a universal QR code that can be read by darn near anybody's phone, or you know, a sophisticated experience building off the latest and greatest uh, smartphones. Now how do we deal with specific products? So we have macaroni and cheese, we have some soup, we have some fruit here. What are we going to do with this? Well, the key thing is that every product has a different piece of information that the customer might want to know about it. So if you're allergic to peanuts, you know, you know to avoid the peanut butter, but you might want to avoid products that have been processed in a factory that has peanuts, sure. and depending on the severity of the allergy, it can be a literally life or death and decision. And we can find out through, with the use of the device, what it, mac and cheese, what this mac and cheese has in it. Exactly, so, if, so here if I pull up macaroni and cheese, what it tells me is allergy information, and it's going to go to Google and pull some information down about what ingredients are there. Now, in a real world, this would be provided by the retail and the manufacturer, so it'd be specific to the actual product. And we can not only pull up general information like this, but we can allow the consumer to burrow down to whatever they need to know. If they want to know if it has a specific kind of gluten in it, because that's what they're allergic to, we can now enable that experience right there at the store shelf, so the consumer can make a better and more informed decision. But we're talking about products with labels on them. What it happens when you start talking about apples and oranges and you know produce that doesn't have stamps or labels? That's actually one of the most important things in retail today is people are very concerned about food safety. Not just the physical safety of it with the product recalls and things like that, but increasingly consumers are really aware of what they eat. They want food that's organic. They want food that's sustainably grown. They, they want to know where the product comes from. So there's a lot of information, particularly around produce, that really influences how a consumer makes buying decisions. Show me what we're up to. So here, when we go in and zoom in on this apple, 
it'll tell me where it came from. This particular apple is a pink lady, came from Washington, and it was picked on September 2009. Mm -hmm. The retailer already has a lot of this information. In Europe, retailers are required to have all of this information all the way back to where the ingredients in the food came from. So sharing that with the consumer has been a goal, but there was never an interface. I wasn't going to bring my web browser with me when I was in the produce <laughs> aisle. Well, now I can. Very long cable if you had, had to do that. And yeah. even if I want to get really rich information, like here's a, a video clip of how apples are harvested that you can actually now deliver right off that image down to the, the customer's uh, phone. And but, we, it, but it's all about giving the consumer relevant information that they might be seeking about a particular product at the point of sale. Exactly. At the time they're going to buy this. Exactly. And the, what, where this is really important from an economic perspective is, is retail worldwide is about a four and a half trillion dollar industry. And it's pretty well established that 70% of purchase decisions are made standing in front of a store shelf like this. So no matter what you do on your website, with your marketing, with your advertising, uh, 70% of that four and a half trillion dollars is being decided right here. So if you can touch the consumer in that point, you've opened up a whole new way to get them to buy your product. So if, you're, uh, if you have a particular brand of organic apples, you want to help make that experience happen because that's where the consumer is making the decision. All right, let's pretend why I have a shopping cart full of goods and uh, it's time to redeem our coupon that we got at the mm -hmm. beginning of the uh, journey here. But, oh, absent-minded me, I've lost the coupon. What do I do? <laughs> well, it happens to all of us, yeah, right? especially yeah, those of us with, with kids who seem to eat anything they put in front of them, including paper. Uh, one of the other things that we can do, because the coupon that we was printed out was simply a, a symbol, a representation of an offer, a very, actually a very complex offer that was tailored to you that's sitting back in, in, the, in, the, in a database somewhere. Uh, now that we're ready to redeem it, we can actually just come up and you can get another copy. With our device. Yeah. It's all recorded. There's that interaction going on between the, again, the, where this is being housed and my device. Yeah. And the other thing that's really important to remember is there's a reason that paper coupons work so well. They can be read by every let's, barcode let's scanner. Let's print our voucher here. Let's yeah, scan our coupon. We, we, they can be read by every barcode scanner out there. You don't have to have a fancy optical scanner because about, I don't know, 90% of what you find in grocery stores around the world are lasers. They can't read anything off this device without a, an expensive retrofit, which is going to happen. But if you want ubiquity right now, you want to get into all 100% of the stores, not just 5 or 10%. And at the end of the day, for the consumer, what does this mean? What this means for the consumer at the end of the day is that in a mobile enabled shopping experience, they can get more information about the products they're buying. They can be get better customer experiences because they don't have to wait for a clerk unless the clerk is really needed to be there in that moment. And they get a lot more convenience and personalization. You can get an offer that's delivered specifically to you, tailored to your tastes and desires, and easy redemption at the checkout stand. So we would just bring this up, scan it at the, at the register, and you're on your way.